What's going on everyone? Kellen Reck here. Welcome back. We've got a video today on five Premiere Pro tips that are going to help you. They're going to speed things up for you and just make everything a lot better when you're cruising along in Premiere Pro. Now these are tips that I use pretty much every day. Some of them are very easy. Some of them are a little bit more advanced, but either way, they're going to save you a ton of time on your edits. So let's dive in. Let's check it out. The first tip is the option copy. So what this means is when you have a clip in your timeline and you wanna make a copy of it, rather than selecting Command C and then Command V to copy paste it, all you have to do is click on your clip, hold down the option key and drag it and you'll make a copy. Just like that, you've got copies. You can do this over and over again. I use this effect all the time, especially when I'm using sound effects if I wanna quickly duplicate a bunch of them. Just hold down option and make a copy. It's the fastest way to copy something and it works very, very efficiently. So I use this all the time. Again, it's holding down option and just clicking and dragging. It's the same as copying and pasting, but it's a lot more functional and a lot more efficient when you're editing in Adobe Premiere. Tip number two master channel effects. This is an awesome trick that I learned somewhat recently and now I use it all the time, pretty much every time I'm editing. So if you have a project where you're using one clip over and over throughout, this is gonna come in super, super handy. Check this out. Let's take a previous video of mine. You can see that I use my standard interview shot often throughout the video. I always cut back to it. And in the end, I wanna color correct this shot. Well, rather than going in like normal, dropping in my color correct, and then having to go to the next clip and do the same color correct and do it 20 to 30 times throughout. All I have to do is click on one clip here, rather than edit the effect here in effects controls, just click on master, apply the color correct, and now you'll see it's on every single clip that is that exact same clip. So let me, let me show you exactly what I mean here. If we scroll in, we can see that this is the clip that ends in seven zero. And that's the same clip here, 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 throughout the whole video because it's one basic interview clip. Well, now they all have this red dash underneath them. And that means that the effect has a master channel effect on it. And in this case, that is our color correction here. So by applying it to the master clip, you can also drag it right over the clip in your project bin. You will be applying the color correct or whatever effect you wanna to do to every piece on your timeline that is that individual clip. And we can go in, if we wanna make an adjustment, we can go in here and we could, let's say, dial up the color temperature, make it crazy. And now if you look throughout the video, every time we go back to that clip, it looks exactly the same with that color correct. And we can undo that and it'll be fixed throughout the video. So this is gonna save you tons of time. If you, for example, went through on each individual instance of this and color corrected, and then you had to go back and make a subtle change, well, you'd have to delete the color correction from each clip and make the adjustment and reapply it. In this case, you can just change it once per clip. So it's a huge, huge help, these master channel effects. And you can do this with audio as well. Just apply it to the master of the audio track and it'll apply the effect every instance of that audio clip throughout your sequence. It's a huge, huge help. Tip number three is all about extending music in your timeline to make it the exact length of the sequence that you want. It's gonna loop automatically by itself if you use this trick. So here's what you gotta do. Bring the music into your timeline as you want. You see we have a full sequence here and this mango clip, this yellow clip here is the music file that we want. And the full song is only well, it only goes up to the, about the two minute mark, but our full video is 323. So we've got a problem. Well, generally what you'd do is you'd go in and you'd find a cut point and then you'd loop it and you'd keep looping that clip. But that takes some time and it requires listening and making sure that you get the audio just right. Well, there's a trick. So let's make a, let's see exactly what we want the length of this to be. I want it to start right here. So I'm gonna set an in and I have my out right where I want the music to end. So we see that we want our track to be 311. And right now our track is 142. So bring your sequence in, your music in where you want it to be. Click on your music file, you're gonna right click. You're going to edit clip in Adobe Audition. So if you have the Adobe Creative Cloud, you're gonna be able to do this. It's gonna bring it right into Adobe Audition for you. And this is where the magic's gonna happen. Check this out. Once your file is inside of Adobe Audition, you're gonna click on the file at the top. You're gonna go insert into new multi-track. So right click on that file, insert into new multi-track, new multi-track session. You can save this wherever you want and just call it song, call it whatever you wanna call it so you know what it is. And it's gonna bring it into this multi-track session. Now, here you'll see on the left side under the properties tab, enable remix. 
So you're gonna click Enable Remix, it's gonna analyze your song and figure out what the different beats are, what the different track points are, and then you can change your target duration. So if you remember, this is a one minute and 42 second song, but we need it to be 311. So go back into Audition, click in the target duration and change it from 142 to 311. And you'll see it's gonna have a plus or minus of five seconds. It's gonna hit it within five seconds of your target duration. And we just hit enter. And now it's instantly made a song that's exactly the length that you want. So you can see there's these little ripples here. That's where they've made their seamless loops for you. It's just nice and easy. They do it all for you right there. You can see that our track is actually, it's about 313. So they did a really good job cutting it, really good job getting it close to exactly what we want. So now all you have to do is file, export, export to Adobe Premiere Pro, and it's gonna save the track again for you. And it's gonna bring it right in as a new audio track. And now your new song is the perfect length. You can see we started at the same point and it goes exactly to the end where we want it to be just a little bit over because it's got that plus or minus five seconds but overall a great way to make your music loop for you sounds very nice the way they loop things in the audition it does it automatically by analyzing it and it's going to do different loop points so it's not just the same thing over and over as you might do it if you were going to do it manually it's really a great trick it saves a ton of time and it can make one individual song as long or as short as you want it to be so definitely try this out it's a great tip it's not just premiere it does use audition but still it's all within the adobe creative cloud creative suite and it's going to do it for you nice and easy so hopefully that trip hopefully that tip helps you out just a little bit Tip number four is another trick for audio. A lot of times when you're going to cut something in Adobe Premiere, you wanna make a cut at a certain point in your audio waveform, but sometimes you can't get it just where you need it to be, and this is gonna help you out. So check this out. It's all about showing audio time units in your sequence. So if you look at your sequence, I wanna make a cut right on this waveform here, right at the beginning of this, but I can't quite get it. I can either cut there, or I can cut here, or I can get here. It's not letting me get exactly where I want it to be. Well, that's because you're cutting on video frames. And obviously we're editing in this case in a 24 frame per second timeline. So we only have 24 frames per second to actually cut. And if a waveform doesn't fall right where we want it to be, we can't make the cut. Well, there is a way to do this. Go up to your audio or go up to your top of your sequence here where the frames are listed out, right click and hit show audio time units. Now what this is gonna do is show you a breakdown of the actual audio in much, much smaller units. So we can zoom in as far as we want. Before we couldn't zoom in further than I was, well now we can just keep zooming in and we can make those cuts as much as we want. See now we're way zoomed out. Now we're almost zoomed out too much. Let me zoom back in to where we were. We wanted to cut right on this. Well, we can. Now we can make that cut anywhere that we want. Boom, whoops. It's right at the beginning of that waveform, perfectly as we wanted it to be cut. And that's all, if you right click, show audio time units, we can bump back out of it. And then we're right, you can see that we actually made that cut in the middle of the frame because we have a frame there. And then here, let me turn off my snapping. Frame here and a frame here, we actually made the cut right in the middle and that's all because we used audio time units. So that's a nice little trick when you're running into issues trying to cut your audio exactly where you want it and to sync things up, that's the key right there to show audio time units. The fifth and final trick of the day for Adobe Premiere Pro is F to source monitor. Now, what does that mean? Well, it's something that I use probably more than any of these when I'm editing. It saves me a ton of time when I wanna find a reference clip, find a source clip, and figure out what it is, and figure out how I can adjust my edits. So check this out. When you're scrubbing through your timeline and you see a clip that you want to see a little bit more of or find the original clip, all you have to do is scrub over it on your timeline, as I am here, and hit F. That'll bring the original clip to your source monitor, and it's gonna actually show you where the in and out of the clip that's being used are. So you can see if we took that, and dragged it right down, this is the exact clip at the exact same sizing, uh, and same in and out as before. Obviously, it wouldn't have any of the effects that we had had on our clip from before, but it's the exact same clip. So if you ever need to find this, again, that you wanna use elsewhere or figure out what it is, just hit F, it's gonna pop into your source monitor and you can grab it and then you can scrub through and see if there are other parts of the clip that you might wanna use instead or use in another place. Now, let's just test this out again. Say I'm scrubbing along and there's something that I like. Oh, I wanted to find the original of this interview shot, just hit F 
and it pops up into this and I can see what part of the clip I'm using, my in and out, they're right there. Now, a slight addition to this trick that you might wanna use in some cases, let's go back to the clip of the coffee mug. If you like this clip, and you wanna find it within your project file bin here, not just in your source monitor, but within your project bin here. If you right click and you go to reveal in project, it's gonna bring your selection to that actual clip. Then you can click on it, you can look at some of the details on it, you can just find it in your project bin. In addition to that, you can right click, right click and go to reveal in finder. That's gonna actually bring the clip up within your file structure in finder within your hard drive. So that's nice if you ever wanna find a raw clip that you need to put somewhere, bring somewhere else. That's just a fast way to do it if it's deep within your project. Just right click within your sequence, reveal in finder, it's gonna bring you right to that clip. Something that I use all the time, especially the F to source monitor, so a great trick to know. So those are five easy Adobe Premiere tips that are gonna help you when it comes to your editing. They're gonna speed things up for you after you get used to them. I really do use these tricks pretty much every day, many, many times a day, and overall they've saved me a ton of time. So go ahead and try to use them. I know some of them seem pretty basic and easy and others may be a little bit more complex, but again, once you learn these, they're really gonna add up and save a ton of time for your video editing. So if you enjoyed, please go ahead and leave a like. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments section. Subscribe if you're enjoying this type of content. We'll be back every week with more videos that are gonna help your video production and filmmaking and photography. So thanks again for watching, guys. We'll check you back in the next one.